So, willkommen zurück aus der Umbaupause. Wir sind schon ganz gespannt auf den nächsten Talk von Tyler Ayers von Google. Er ist ähm, ein ähm, Customer Engineer bei Google und spezialisiert auf ähm, No-Code, RP, App, Automation und cloud Platform. Und wir sind gespannt auf seinen ähm, Vortrag über App-Sheets. Wie eben schon angekündigt, äh, kann man das ganz gut auch benutzen, ohne irgendwelche Programmierkenntnisse zu haben. Und äh, ja, da wollen wir jetzt direkt mal reinschauen und hoffen, Tyler dann danach bei der Q&A zu treffen. Great. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session uh, titled Enable Innovation Everywhere, No-Code App Development with AppSheet. My name is Tyler Ayers. I'm an engineer in the Google Cloud Business Application Platform team, which is responsible for AppSheet and Apigee and, and automation topics in the Google Cloud. And I'm really happy to give you an overview today of how AppSheet fits into no code and generally your digitalization strategy. Um, this is an astounding number, I think 65% of application development activity will be done using low and no code tools by 2024 uh, is the result of a Gardner, Gardner magic quadrant uh, for low code application platforms. And the clear reason for this is that there just aren't enough developers out there to realize all the great app use cases that you know we have in our business teams um, in our organization you know all of the manual processes and all of the use cases where an app-based workflow and process would be so much easier and more effective um, and then we can really leverage low code and no code platforms to deliver solutions faster for those use cases Uh, AppSheet is a product, yeah, within the Google Cloud and Google Workspace families. Um, Forrester has rated it as a leader in the low-code space. So, you know, really leading the pack for strong features for mobile app development, data design, and application scaling, and also very high marks for customer satisfaction. So it's a, a, a well-respected uh, solution on the no-code and low-code uh, stage and has been, yeah, been used for, for thousands of companies around the world. Uh, the concept behind AppSheet is, is really simple. Um, it starts with connecting your data wherever it lives. So this can be Google Drive, Google Sheet data, it can also be Office 365, Excel, or OneDrive data, um, but also it can be SQL databases or uh, SaaS platforms like Salesforce, or even Uh, the latest addition is an API adapter, uh, the Apigee data source for AppSheet, uh, where we can tap into any RESTful APIs as a data, data source for no-code apps. Uh, the next step is that AppSheet spins up an app you know, based on best practices and parsing the schema of the data and gives you a fully functioning running app right out of the box that you can test and customize uh, for your needs. But uh, it's really amazing, and this is you know, part of the magic, is to just you know, build apps and enable app creation uh, just based on source data, right? So you'll get a fully functioning app that you can then customize and configure for your use case. And the last step is to deploy that app uh, to your users, whoever they are, right? So they could be you know, in your own organization, in your, in your department, but they could also be partners or in customers. And so this really enables uh, business users. So anyone who's just you know, using Google Workspace and, and has data in, in Sheets and OneDrive to, um, to immediately start publishing apps that users can um, you know, use and deploy and or use and install on their mobile devices and you know, start um, you know, using app-based workflows just you know, from day one. Uh, to uh, to solve you know some some business needs. Um, so so there there are three core principles for how AppSheet works as a no code platform. Uh, the first one is first of all just the no code principle, meaning that there is no risk of you know rogue code or security vulnerabilities being introduced into your apps 
uh, because it's a fully managed platform, right? So uh, there's no possibility to add any code or any scripts or any um, vulnerabilities like that. The next uh, principle is clear visibility. So that all the apps that are created in your organization are visible and manageable from a central uh, enterprise administrator. Um, this means that you know, we can give that freedom and the freedom to innovate to all you know, workspace users, but also maintain some guardrails and visibility into the types of apps that they're creating, uh, take over you know, um, orphaned apps in case uh, employees leave the company or um, the deployment is, is, um, is, is no longer uh, uh, um, taken care of. And so you know, we have that clear visibility throughout the organization for, of all of the apps being deployed and used. And the last principle is control so that we can also apply security policies, uh, do central auditing of how the apps work and what kind of data they're uh, offering to users. Um, and so here we can also satisfy uh, even the most strict you know, IT security um, regulations and even in highly regulated areas like banking and insurance, uh, we see a lot of adoption um, of AppSheet and, and no-code platforms uh, for that reason, is that we have increased compliance, security, and transparency. But a question I'd like to ask you is, um, you know, how enabled are citizen developers in your organization today? Um, can they, you know, take the reins and, and build and deploy their own apps? Um, are they empowered, right? So we see it as, as really key to empower uh, the SMEs in your organization, the subject matter experts, because line of business workers you know, know their data and their work best. And so no code tools gives them the power to design and publish their own apps to, uh, to satisfy their use cases. Again, though, it's important to have proper guardrails on the process so that those you know, IT and IT security um, is clearly defined. And so you know, give, empower and give that innovation, uh, but with uh, some controls. Also important to really think about is the last mile digitalization. So, you know, even today, you know, there's been a ton of investments in digitalization. Um, however, a lot of processes are still tracked, you know, via spreadsheets, emails, uh, pictures, pen, and, and paper. So despite uh, modern tools and, 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 you know, doing everything in the cloud, still users uh, need more to actually properly um, optimize and digitalize the processes. And that's where we see um, um, uh, platforms like AppSheet filling that gap. And the last topic is to eliminate shadow IT. So, you know, if users aren't finding the tools they need in the portfolio, they're going to start looking for, um, you know, for new solutions, for third-party solutions. Um, and so AppSheet kind of fills that gap. So it gives them a, a powerful tool, you know, but deeply integrated into Google Workspace. And, and so this can help, you know, satisfy that need for fast, innovative apps and uh, prevent users from looking to you know, external or third-party solutions. For, the, for these use cases. Uh, some customers who have you know, done a lot with AppSheet and proven uh, the, the innovation capabilities and the boost to productivity, um, one of them is a chemical company in the US called Solvay. And they used AppSheet uh, basically to digitalize all of their operations. So they were running their factories and their logistics um, using a lot of Excel spreadsheets and email-based processes. And so they clearly just put AppSheet front and center for their app development. So empowering citizen developers who ended up creating around 10,000 apps that are used throughout their organization in all kinds of departments to manage logistics, uh, manage factory um, operations, um, uh, manage supply chain, so partner uh, um, sourcing and um, uh, organization. Um, and so AppSheet provided this the robust, reliable app platform uh, with no formal software development training needed for their workforce. Uh, some other examples are in the construction industry. So um, American Electric Power and KLB Construction um, also were looking to manage their construction sites uh, and also construction equipment um, optimization. So doing resource planning around which equipment, which people, which resources are needed when on which sites and using AppSheet low code and no code 
uh, apps to track and manage all of that data. So much more effective than um, doing that via you know, telephone, email, you know, traditional means. Also now in the COVID crisis, um, we've seen a lot of adoption of our usage of AppSheet um, just because you know, a lot of organizations and governments and, and healthcare uh, organizations have had to react very quickly to deal with the crisis. And that's also an aspect of no code that just helps, right? So, you know, when we have to act quickly and think about organizing um, logistics, people, resources, uh, um, you know, this is where, where no code can really help us be fast and effective in that. So really, you know, designing, deploying, using solutions on the spot, um, not waiting for project teams or developers to, to ramp up and, and push out solutions, but really just taking, you know, matters into our own hands and, and using the tools that were that we have like Google Workspace and Sheets, and then combined with no code, you know, we can just deliver and, and use solutions much faster. And so, in situations like the COVID crisis, this is also um, yeah been really been really critical. So there's you know a ton of opportunities for no code app development in in all kinds of organizations. Um, we see a, a lot of adoption in field service operations. So. Um, working around driver dispatch and logistics, on-site services delivery, field resource management. Um, so, you know, thinking about drivers, you know, who have mobile devices with them, who are tracking their deliveries, planning their routes, um, and uh, no-code apps can help, you know, be agile and deliver the right apps that help them the most in their daily, daily work. So, you know, doing package scanning, tracking, um, feeding all that data into central systems, but also pumping it back out into the field where the drivers um, and, and, and vehicles are, are, um, are moving uh, is really, yeah, been, been used in a lot of use cases like that. Uh, inventory management is also a great area for low code and no code apps. So tracking inventory, using barcode, QR code, um, NFC scanning, to track assets, packages, deliveries, um, warehouse automation. So some of actually the, the largest warehouse operators in the world use AppSheet for their warehouse automation. So tracking people, resources, assets around locations, um, feeding that data into you know, central data sources, but letting their employees work and also innovate and, and expand the apps then on a need uh, on a need basis based on concrete use cases in their, in their operations. Um, another topic is inspections and auditing, quality control. So these repetitive tasks around facilities and maintenance. So, you know, tracking um, uh, problems or issues that pop up in uh, facilities, um, scheduling inspections, um, uh, repairs, um, service providers, these types of things. So where you know, partners and, and different users and types of users come together, uh, we can really coordinate really well with app-based workflows um, in a no-code context. Um, even though in the office, you know, we have lots of use cases around project management, um, worker management, budget planning and tracking, tracking. Um, IT ticketing is a big use case. So, you know, also providing interfaces to systems like ServiceNow or other ticketing services. Um, you know, no code apps can give us easier, faster app workflows for working with that data, for tracking assets also in, a, in an office context. Um, another really interesting area is around human resources. Uh, onboarding and training of um, people. So providing apps that, you know, communicate information to people about specific topics and give training um, briefings, um, like for new hires or people who are being onboarded in an organization, uh, an app-based approach to that communication gives the possibility to integrate email notifications, SMS workflows into these processes to do scheduling through apps, uh, which can be much more effective than you know, some, some email-based processes um, in the past. Um, and the last area is sales and marketing. So um, anything around customer and events is a great use case for no code. These, you know, these are typically um, topics where um, 
you know, it's not worth investing in a big app development project for an event that's being planned, right? And we can still, though, use the advantages of apps uh, with no code to, you know, do the event logistics and planning uh, through a no code app. So have all the advantages of an app-based system, uh, but none of the effort and none of the costs that are associated with that, with like, you know, designing and, and, um, and developing a custom app for some event. Um, so there's a lot of solutions available uh, under solutions.appsheet.com. Uh, so you can browse through lots of industries and try out these solutions just directly in your browser. Uh, so these are like, you know, ready built um, apps, templates that you can you know, test and, and also copy into your own environment with just one click. Uh, so it's really easy to test out these use cases and, and find something useful uh, for your particular um, uh, industry. And in the end, you know, we just want to shorten the developer life, the development life cycle. So bring ideas faster uh, and more effectively to a solution, to a finished working use case. Um, for custom apps, of course, it's necessary to have, you know, development cycles, specifications, team, code, you know, CI, CD pipelines, all of these topics. But for um, a lot of use cases, I think, um, you know, most use cases, we just really want to go from our idea to a finished solution as fast as possible. And the more automation and the more uh, no code, so best practice templates we can use, the better. Uh, so, you know, this is just a much faster and more effective method to get from point A to point B than going through the typical uh, development process. We also don't have to sacrifice on any device functionalities. Um, we've seen, you know, that mobile users have very high expectations for user experience because there's so many great apps out there, right? So we're all used to using, you know, really excellent apps uh, for, you know, maps or um, uh, workspace, um, uh, docs, sheets, uh, but lots of other examples, you know, for travel planning and, you know, everything we use our mobile devices for, communication, messaging. Um, and so, you know, users have high expectations and uh, we, we see it that we can meet those expectations with no code apps. So, you know, how this works in AppSheet is based on a data schema from your, um, you know, sheets or databases or um, APIs. We use the data types to really, you know, use all of the mobile uh, capabilities that are available. Right. So that means if we have, um, you know, properties or fields that contain barcodes or QR codes or NFC data that will, you know, always just use automatically the capabilities on a mobile device to scan barcodes, QR codes, NFC tags. Um, if we have, you know, properties for images or videos, then we'll use the camera to capture images and videos or let the user upload their own uh, images from the gallery and, and use their mobile device to you know, capture any uh, data um, in the field uh, to add uh, to it to an app. Um, another key capability of AppSheet and a big advantage on the market is the offline capability. So we've see, you know we see a lot of um, of these types of frameworks that are online only, where you know to use the app you have to be connected to the cloud. Uh, if you have spotty um, uh, mobile data connections, then your app doesn't work or it only, you know, shows you a, a spinning uh, a weight signal. Um, and that's something in AppSheet that we, um, we just have a different approach. And so all apps that you build with AppSheet are 100% offline capable. So you can use them uh, wherever you go with your mobile device, regardless if you have mobile data signal or not, or if you're on Wi-Fi or not. Um, so that's why the solution is really perfectly fitted for, you know, these, these on the go use cases and logistics and warehouse operations and, you know, added, bringing app based workflows to areas where we don't normally have cloud and internet connectivity, right? So we can still do data input, uh, collect, um, um, change, save, you know, do all of the operations we need to do on the data, and it will be synced automatically in the background to our data source when we're online again. And so this all just works out of the box in app sheets. So it's it's a big advantage. Uh, another key capability are rich notifications, so that 
you know, when, when users are on the go, that something changes, they can get notified and be able to um, uh, start workflows to do processing of data when something happens. So we can apply logic to our data and our app-based workflows, um, you know, directly in our apps. Um, and last but not least, uh, location-based services are really important uh, so that, you know, we can always track uh, uh, latitude, longitude, signals based on GPS for mobile devices, incorporate that with other data together for our app, you know, based context and use case, um, and then integrate with other platforms and, you know, synchronize that data to um, other systems. And so design this all, you know, from within our, our no-code app in a really intuitive way. Uh, there's also some big updates coming soon um, in the automation area of AppSheet so that we can design even more uh, richly um, uh, designed workflows and logic uh, that we can contain within our apps, but always adhering to the clear no-code principles. Um, and here the flexibility is just key so that any you know, combination of these capabilities any way of visualizing or you know, using, uh, manipulating the data, we can incorporate in apps that are flexible for you know, all types of mobile devices, regardless if you're using um, Apple iOS or Android um, or you know, laptops and a web browser, uh, the apps always you know, work in, um, in whatever form factor or location you take them, right? So in the field, in facilities or in the office, you know, you can always, you can always access the apps, use them, um, and use all of these functionality, functionalities that are just built in and work out of the box with no, you know, coding or additional effort. You know, a big area around digitalization um, is for, you know, field service operations. So, you know, doing better data collection, faster streamlined deliveries, dispatching resources more efficiently. Um, so we can use mobile devices combined with uh, tablets and, and web browsers to um, you know, have these workflows and collect data and even use like OCR text extraction um, dynamically in the app and just have this added to our data using the services built directly into app sheets. So there's just no faster way to do data collection and field service digitalization than with no code apps built an app sheet. Um, another area around facility and asset management, so tracking assets regardless if they are indoors or outdoors using geolocation, um, but even indoors, we can track you know, on um, indoor floor plans um, or factory uh, plans, right? So uh, we have equipment tracking and inspection use cases on factory floor plans, so all built in the app using no code, um, you know, identifying devices and locations based on barcodes and NFC tags, um, and then securing different levels of access for different types of users, right? So um, often we'll have, you know, different roles that are active in the apps and we can design and customize these apps, you know, for different user roles and present, uh, you know, rich dashboard, uh, layouts for some users who are tracking more, um, you know, the, the the flow of the data and what's going on, uh, and then have more mobile-based data entry um, uh, functionalities for users who are, you know, in the field actually collecting data or ent entering uh, changes into the system. Around project and event management, again, um, really useful to, you know, track tasks and project status use Kanban style project boards uh, within our apps, um, you know, getting updates from all the users in a team or an organization, uh, but also showing everyone the current status in real time, right? So if someone changes something, it gets synchronized to our data source and everyone gets an update and can see that, you know, pretty much in real time. Um, we can, you know, have these workflows that when someone changes, you know, data in a particular record or an object, you know, we can synchronize and, 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 and give notifications or emails or SMS to team members to take a look and maybe even approve or reject or, you know, do something based on that, uh, on that data. 
Um, also calendar coordination and integration as well into Google Calendar um, helps us to, you know, again, offer rich workflows around event and planning um, tasks. So, you know, in the end, this gives us um, a really rich, um, um, you know, board to work on our, you know, communication between our app users, um, our applications, our app creators. So our citizen developers who are, you know, subject matter experts, um, thinking about these use cases, trying to solve problems more efficiently and better, um, and then connecting to our data wherever it lives, right? So regardless if it's spreadsheets or SQL databases or RESTful APIs, um, you know, we can connect, tap into that data, use multiple data sources in our apps, publish those apps to our users and manage this all from one consistent platform, you know, richly integrated into Google Workspace. So I hope this gave you an overview of the AppSheet platform and what's possible and what kind of use cases are out there. Um, and again, I'll end with an invitation to, you know, think big, Think about new use cases, you know, what can you solve using no-code technologies and give it a try with AppSheet. Uh, any Google Sheets user can spin up an app based on their worksheet uh, directly from within Sheets is a new feature. This is coming to Google Workspace later next year. And um, yeah, the future looks bright with no-code and AppSheet and um, looking forward to your questions and uh, synchronizing. Thank you. Hi, Tyler. Hi. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for your uh, talk this afternoon. So um, just starting the conversation, my first question would be, I mean, this is an app especially targeted on non-developers more or less, or it especially says like it's a no-code platform, so everybody should be able to, to use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, from your experience, how long would it take me as a non-developer to create my first app? Like if I just would start uh, now, uh, how much time would I need to create my first application? Yeah, so I mean, and that's the great thing about about no code, right? Is that you can take any Google Sheet and just you know go to the tools menu now and go to App Sheet and say create an app from this sheet, and it will spin up. You know, regardless of how much data you have or you know how, what um, how many you know worksheets you have, you know it'll spin up an app automatically that you can just start using right away, right? So similar to Google Forms, this is you know, just a way to start building an app basically automatically, right? And then it already works. And then you could just learn and customize from there. So I would say, you know, the first version of your app you can have in one click, you know, so 30 seconds. Um, and then you can gradually learn, okay, how can we add more advanced features to this app using things like, um, you know, geolocation, barcode scanning, NFC tags, um, image recognition, document scanning. So you can add those features as you go and and all of them with, with no code. So that's the cool thing, right? So that anyone can really learn um, to add those and it's really easy. So um, that's, I think, a really a strength we have in the uh, Google Workspace and, and AppSheet um, portfolio, right? Is to say, we want to enable every user to be able to create apps um, with actual with no coding um, experience, right? So this should go really really quickly, and that's just a, a key, you know, focus and and target of the AppSheet platform, and I think a, a differentiator to other similar platforms on the market, right? Is this this will always be pure no code, and and everyone can start building and using apps, you know, really immediately. I think that's pretty impressive, and actually, this could be something like a revolution somehow on the way uh, applications are created. At the same time, I see some kind of fear or mental barrier or whatever you would call it for people that are not used to creating an app and now having some kind of technology at hand that they could use to create an app. So I think there is still some some kind of fear or barrier. Do you have any recommendations what companies could do in order to show them uh, how they could use it and, and maybe even inspire them for use cases and uh, just to getting the thing started somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
So we, you know, always talk to both the business and innovation sides and the IT side in parallel, right? Because it's very important to understand that, you know, a platform like AppSheet, like lots of cloud services, right? Um, this is a, a shared responsibility model, right? So, you know, we're providing a, a platform, a SaaS offering that you can access in any browser. Um, users are authenticating, you know, with their identities, with their Google identities, for example, and then authenticating access from the app to their data, wherever it is, right, in Google Sheets or in cloud SQL databases or, you know, somewhere else, right? So it's really important to, um, you know, have IT security see that end-to-end -end use case. Um, and But we have very good experience, right, that we have the the policy controls, the compliance um, auditing tools built in to AppSheet that, you know, we can safely offer this platform to users, allow them to build apps on top of their own data, understand how to use the security controls, um, and then also enforce central policies to like give the basic guardrails, right, of how, you know, a tool like this can be used in a company, right, to say, hey, are we going to allow, you know, all users to access these app sheet apps or restrict it to certain domains, um, certain data sources, you know, maybe so we can add restrictions like that. We call them uh, security policies um, at an enterprise or a team level um, where necessary, right? But I think it's just important that the platform supports uh, data protection, you know, from the from the ground up, um, and that is definitely the case in app sheet. You can mark any data as PII data in app sheet, and it will not be logged or um, you know, written or persisted anywhere in the platform. Um, everything is encrypted at rest on mobile devices, uh, in the cloud, none of the data is stored, right? It's only processed from data source to app and back again. Um, so we can you know, have these discussions and, and bring the confidence and, and give people the confidence to use the platform with their data and, uh, and know that it's, it's secure, it's compliant, and they have control over it in the end. And besides this kind of data security questions, do we see any organizational guidelines that companies could or uh, should put in place in order to prevent them from having like 5,000 applications uh, running around and being somehow in production, but then are not getting supported maybe? Or is there some yeah. maintenance work that, that uh, companies should yeah, be at least uh, aware of and should take, mm -hmm. um, yeah, should well, find it, some guidelines yeah. or. That's a great question. So um, that's why we, you know, so, we, you know, as an enterprise user of admin uh, of um, app sheet. So if you're an enterprise user, you have an enterprise admin um, role that a user has or multiple users have. And so they can see an overview of all of the apps in the organization, right? So in the enterprise and, or, you know, even for corporate customers, smaller companies, it's the same, right? So you can see that overview centrally. Um, you can, you know, take over orphaned apps. If someone creates an app, you know, it's being used, but then they leave the company. Uh, it's really important that, you know, that, that app shouldn't just die because someone's using it perhaps, right? So someone can take over ownership through an admin console. That's really important. So that's supported as well. Um, we're actually working on a big update for early next year on the enterprise management console to make that more, uh, the, improve the usability there so that you have that clear overview of all the apps in the organization and can maintain and configure that accordingly. Um, uh, so we have like some of our biggest customers um, have over 10,000 apps in their organization, no code apps, right? Um, that's actually in, in in our in my perspective that's what signifies innovation right so you know to grow and to scale it's often the question can we do it internally with the tools we have now or which tools do we need to actually scale and what do we want to scale we want to scale usage consumption right because the more usage we can generate from our services that's uh, has signifies that our business is growing and that actually you know people are using and consuming and, and buying our services right and so we can scale with internal developers but that's really hard right because there's never are never enough developers in the market like you saw in the presentation never enough developers in our organization so with no code apps we can scale through citizen de developers and so actually you know getting more apps um, produced means that the best ones will rise to the top because you can see which ones are the best ones 
by which ones are used the most, right? Because like all of us, right, we've installed maybe 100 apps on our mobile devices, but we only use maybe five to 10 really actively, right? And those are the best ones. And it's the same with, you know, all app platforms. So with AppSheet as well, you monitor the data, you see where there's traction, where apps are really being used, and you encourage those, you promote those, you get those, you know, out there, scale those. And, you know, the other uh, 80 apps from the 100 that aren't being used, you know, that that is what let the good ones rise to the top, right? So that fosters innovation, more development, more app use cases. Um, and so that's how I see it. I don't see it as a disadvantage to have lots of apps out there. Um, that's how you test, that's how you get the experience. Uh, the pain is when you have to invest a ton of money and time to get just a few apps out there that in the end maybe aren't even used, right? That's that's the tragedy. So we want to avoid that and use tools like no code to get a lot of app use cases, test them out, try it out in the field with your users, with your employees, with your team members, and you know, find those app use cases that really make sense, promote those, scale those, and we can just do that a lot faster with no code tools, right? To make the good app use cases rise to the top and show us you know, what really makes sense and helps us move forward. Right? So uh, one of our um, workspace customers just asked, so they have lately uh, started using Clyde and he's asking for some kind of competitor insights. Is there any resources on that that uh, they could have a look on and, uh, and maybe understand how this solution is different from AppSheet? Um, okay, if I get the question, uh, you mean like competitive resources to other no-code platforms, or yeah? So they mm -hmm. they uh, he wrote that they are using Google Sheets and uh, are using um, or have created some so workflows using mm -hmm. a client. No, no, they are a workspace customer, mm -hmm. but they started using Clyde, some kind of competitive oh, okay. uh, okay, solution it, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, now he's asking if if you have some kind of uh, information about the competitive advantage of AppSheet over Glide, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Glide, I've actually uh, used, tested it as well. It's an really cool. I think it's a startup um, that, you know, they, they, you know, really going with the progressive web app approach to no code. Um, so from my experience, you know, with with more of the, let's say the, the web, uh, the progressive web app approach, right, or something like that, um, these are, you know, especially the newer startups um, and, and in Glide specifically, I don't know, but I think in general, um, right there, they're often missing the uh, enterprise connectivity or the different. I mean, for example, you know, I want to connect my uh, domain, my identity um, domain to the app. I want single sign on. Um, I want to be able to authorize to multiple data sources potentially. And so often we have, you know, customers who start with sheets which is great for small apps. Um, but at some point, if you're getting like millions and millions of rows of data, you know, you're probably going to need to uh, scale up to like a, an SQL instance, right? So you can do that in Google Cloud really easily, right? Add a Cloud SQL database. Uh, the awesome thing in AppSheet is you can just change the connection, the configuration to that database, and you don't have to change anything else in your app, right? So the app continues working normally. You just change the database from Sheets to Cloud to SQL. Your users don't notice anything. That's great, right? It's just one configuration. Um, you know, normally to change your database, so your back end, you have to, you know, recode parts of your app, right? So that's just, we can avoid that with AppSheet. Um, and so, you know, that type of scalability, can I scale up? Uh, to other types of data sources, right, with, you know, where I can support millions of, you know, um, rows of data, if my app is really successful, and, you know, it's used a lot, um, uh, then, um, you know, I want to make sure I can grow uh, like that. Um, thinking of other, you know, integration topics, so kind of connected to other systems as well. The newest aspect in AppSheet that I'm really excited about, excited about is connecting to APIs, so through the Apigee data source and AppSheet, we can connect to uh, RESTful APIs in our no-code apps, which is a great resource, a great tool. Uh, if I have particular algorithms that are doing or, or microservices that are providing me with um, you know, useful functionality, I can put those in a RESTful API, you know, get a developer to do that for me. That API is reusable, and then I can leverage that in my no-code app for example, right? Um, so that's something that I think, you know, looking into those more advanced use cases, uh, something that we're really um, excited to support more and more of in, in AppSheet. Um, automation is, of course, a topic for itself, right? 
Um, if you just search in YouTube for AppSheet automation, you'll see a, a YouTube video uh, from Cloud Next about a month ago and um, about the new automation platform that's coming early next year. And you can see a demo of that and it looks incredible, right? To be able to automate more um, of how data is synchronized and processed behind these no-code apps with, again, no code. Um, so these types of updates I think are, are really exciting and showing what's possible uh, in the platform. Uh, would you mind uh, like giving us another tour and maybe showing an additional demo of uh, some functionality in AppSheet? Because also sure. uh, Dominic was asking, he, he was a bit later in the talk, so it would be great if you could like have a, a three to five minute demo of uh, some other use case. Yeah, sure. Um, cool. So you should be able to see my screen right now. We are, yes. Yes. And so, um, you know, I was just talking about the um, you know different data sources that you can use in AppSheet. Um, and so this is an example of a sample app uh, that I've built together with a, a customer around energy management, right? So that's also the cool thing about AppSheet is that we're doing projects with like customers in all different industrial segments, right? So everything from chemicals to logistics to manufacturing and finance and, and everything in between. So um, that's really a, a cool part about seeing how we can use these tools in all of the different uh, verticals. Um, and so in this app, you know, we have this energy data. This is basically uh, different energy meters uh, that are out in the field. Um, and this data is being pumped in via, um, it's coming from an API, actually. So we started with a sheet for this data. Um, and eventually switched over to um, an API uh, because we were actually wanting to pull it in from uh, the backend system, right? So it was, this is actually being pumped into SAP uh, and we're retrieving it from the SAP interfaces through a RESTful API into our app. Um, and so, uh, but the cool thing is, is that any areas that we don't yet have through another data source, we can just use Google Sheets for, right? So if we're doing like job um, coordination around like repairs and construction around these energy meters, we can just store that in a Google Sheet. Um, some of our meter data and readings are coming from APIs. We could have additional data sources. Um, so the ability to mix and match data from multiple sources into one app just with configuration one click here is really awesome, right? So we see then in the end result, it's like a mashup of data coming from lots of different sources and we can and work with that, right? In a no code way um, and design a, you know, a really useful app for users to get an overview of like, you know, energy data and construction uh, jobs across the organization. Um, additionally, if we want to scale, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we can change this, Uh, Google Sheets data source at any time to a Cloud SQL uh, data source, right? And then scale up to a, a, an SQL database with no changes here in the actual app um, itself. Just that connection is changed, right? Um, so uh, in this example, you know, we um, you know basically can use this on a tablet as well and track our energy devices around the world. Um, and these readings that are coming in, like I said, are coming from an SAP backend. Um, and so we're just tracking these readings. We see them in real time as they come in. So being fed in through our API. Um, and we can also, you know, design these dashboards that, um, you know, scale automatically to use our screen real estate. And we can track uh, the devices and the readings here um, in an app sheet app. So, you know, thinking about traditional development, we'd have to, you know, get a developer um, or, you know, do a lot of work to um, build these front ends and we can just basically wire it up automatically with our different backends and, and immediately deploy it and use it in the field. Um, so that's a really exciting uh, thing. Um, you know, also uh, working with other customers, you know, integrating with calendar to do, um, you know, coordination task planning in their organization. Um, and that's actually, you know, really cool to think about you know, think about like the user first. What does the user need to perform their job better, right? Um, and then not being restricted by, you know, what tooling do they have today on their smartphones? You know, do they have to send emails or, you know, synchronize data manually somehow to do something? Um, and then how can we connect those different data sources together in an app to, to make that job easier to do, right? And to automate the parts that are time consuming, you know, like copying data <laughs> from between different sources and, and um, converting things, right? So how can we automate that through actions and automation in these no-code apps, um, you know, 
still connecting and synchronizing with our different backend systems. Um, I think that's really the potential and the uh, the cool use cases. So the more you know, different backends and data sources and um, in automation we can build in without having to code or deploy any microservices um, is you know really shows the potential of um, of the platform. Um, so that's just a simple example. Um, you know, as usual with AppSheet. You know, all of the uh, app design and configuration, you know, we can customize and change in real time. Um, so, and, and preview it and use it here, you know, in our in our designer console. <clears throat> so for example, you know, I was showing you this full screen uh, dashboard view. Um, that's, you know, one of the more uh, advanced features in AppSheet is that, you know, we start off in the, in the smartphone format, right? And so we're, you know, have our tables and our, um, you know, our graphs and things, uh, but it's really nice to also be able to scale up to different screen sizes, right? And so uh, this is this dashboard uh, view type here. Um, encourage everyone, if you haven't tried it yet, to, to think about using it for, you know, apps that you want to enable on multiple screen sizes, multiple devices. Um, and here, basically, you know, how you use it is you just add it to your app as a view, um, and then just configure, okay, which panels do I want to have in that? And these can be the same views that are used separately in other places. Um, and you're basically just adding them to the dashboard and they will be stacked um, you know, pretty automatically here in the larger format. Uh, you can also resize and you know, drag them around and reorder them you know, and, and find the right layout for you. Uh, that layout configuration is saved per user, right? So any user that accesses your app can kind of you know, make their own layout decisions here. And, and again, just helping them work with the data more efficiently, you know, maintain, add, change things, save it. Um, and all the you know, synchronization is done automatically behind the scenes to whatever data sources they're using, right? Okay, thank you, Tyler. So this was uh, pretty interesting. And uh, actually, I would love to have some kind of a hackathon around it. And uh, I will definitely reach out to your team to discuss that. Maybe we can mm -hmm. make it happen, uh, for example, also with, together with the local user group, but then focus on citizen developers. And I would really love to set up something like that. So thanks a lot. If, if anybody from the audience has additional questions, then just reach out to us and we'll be happy to pass your questions on. Tyler, have a nice evening, a nice weekend. Thanks a lot and uh, see Thanks. you very soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.